Hello and welcome back ladies and gentlemen to the Star Ladder CIS Minor Qualifier. We have got Extreme taking on Not Bad as they start to move in towards the A bomb site. Waterfalls will get it planted right in front of Triple. And most of the players here on the CT side are just going to play it on retake. They have won the first map Nuke. 5 and K will walk in and take himself a headshot on the Waterfalls. Moonshine able to collect that one as well. And Big God with there with one as well. It's all over at this point. Airscape on his own into a 1v5. Not going to happen for him. It will be a run win for not bad. And that's exactly what they want coming into their map pick. This is Mirage. Their pick. They decided they wanted to play this map. And they've done it pretty well so far. One kill only being fought on the exit there from our skip. Other than that, not a single kill sourced. And uh, I think there's a... No sign. That's, that's definitely needed. We'll see if we can fix that. There we go. It is fixed, ladies and gentlemen. We already get into this one. Extreme, they're going to be on that T side. Not exactly uh, the more favorite side. I think Mirage is a little bit more even than some of the maps, but I definitely still feel like it's got a stronger CT affair. We'll see if Not Bad can pull that off. They had a good CT side on Nuke. Can they get it done here on the CT side of Mirage? Perhaps so as well. There will be Moonshine taking away Airscape. It will be the man advantage for the CT side. There's bit gold drops inside the middle. He'll look towards the underpass, looks towards top middle and gets a kill on the Vitosh. Now it's into a 5v3. Two man advantage for the CT side. Should be a relatively easy pick up here as well. Bix just holding the angle, waiting for these pistols to walk into him. He just uses the long range advantage he has in the rifle and makes it work well. As Fix is able to pick up Archie as well. Last man alive. Last man standing is Waterfalls. And he is most likely to fall here as well. As he makes his way through towards the underpass. Maybe a waterfall is just sitting in below. There will be a kill from BitGod. 2-0 here. 2-0 start for not bad. They'll be feeling very happy about that one. You know, if you're just tuning into the, uh, into the series, we are currently on the second map of the best of three here. And not bad have uh, picked Mirage, and they ended up winning their opponent's map pick, Extremum, on uh, on Nuke. So, they should be feeling very happy. I kind of looked at this and, you know, kind of said how we, we thought Extremum were playing well yesterday. Um, maybe we kind of seen them play well against Spirit, so I thought, you know, it would be a bit of a better performance. But they didn't really get the, the win under their belt here on Mirage yesterday, and at least they've got the advantage into round number three. It's Waterfalls just taking that early fight inside the middle, dropping the player inside a window. In the form of that who came, and now it's going to be the man advantage for the T side to try and work with. Archie's going to send himself towards underpass. He'll give himself that duty, that roll. He's got a backup from Talker. Ivan K will be trying to lock the middle down, and he'll be doing that on his own at this point. Deciding perhaps he doesn't want to do that, and he'll fall back instead. They'll go for the 2 2 setup. 2 on the A bomb site, 2 on B. And uh, Moonshine's gone a little bit of a push right through Palace already. He's going to be clearing the back lines. I'll be the man advantage for the T side. Big God is going to be up on top. He'll get his head torn off by a skip. And that uh, will be a 5 and K looking to try and do some damage here as well as Talker will hit the floor into the 3v3. 45 seconds here on the clock. At this point, Extreme, they're going to want to try and get up towards the B bomb side. But Fix is going to be sitting here. And a good job so far in the first couple of rounds. Can he do it again? Spots the one player short. Flashes around the corner. Wants extremely low as well. That's Waterfalls. One bullet would do it. And the last man is Waterfalls. 13 HP. He will get the kill, but finished off by 5 NK. It's going to be a 3-0 start here for Not Bad. They are looking indomitable. And that is such a good way for them to start off Mirage. They needed that good start if they want to continue the momentum from Nuke. If they want to keep up that good performance, then obviously they need a good start. And they've got that. No, there's no real excuses. It should be off to a very hot lead in indeed. Vitosh looking for the early pick towards mid. And with the kill from Bitcoin that has arrived, it will be an easy one at long range with the Yorg. And actually is dropping towards underpass. He'll take that as well. Talker and Airskate, the last two men standing. And will be fixed looking for that kill up towards the apartments. He'll get it as well. And it's all on to Airskip. The bomb's all the way towards T-spawn, so probably not going to get too much done here. Obviously, they wanted a bomb plant, but... 5 and K is just going to look up towards Palace and just wait for him to walk into his crosshair, and eventually he will. There it is, the kill. 
Not bad looking. Very solid indeed. This run is an important one. And Waterfalls has found the opening kill. Yeah, that's the second of the game as well. That is where... Extreme were lacking. On Nuke, they didn't really have those opening engagements early. And the only player really doing it for them was Waterfalls. So it's good to see he's still on that. The good part about that opening kill as well is that they kept it, right? There's many times where Waterfalls has found the opening kill, but they haven't really been able to keep it. And so they lose it like straight away and then there's big problems after that. So, now that they've got the opening kill, they can't afford to just sit outside the A ramp, do an execute into this. And uh, hope they can get it done, but the CTs have rotated over with three players. It's the right call as well. As soon as they see the utility, they just got to stick around. They're going to be pretty happy they've made this call to stack over towards A. And Vitosh is starting to come through. No kills yet for either team, and because they're playing in front of the smokes, it kind of gets a little bit awkward. As Vitosh has been able to pick up that who can 5 and K, one and done position. Vitor tries to get it done and actually gets another. So it's back into a 2v2. Archie could actually realistically get this bomb planted, but that Molotov coming in, that's going to slow it. That's a lot of the rotation from Fix to come on in, but Waterfalls, surely he's the man to pick this kill up. He's just holding at the stairs, waiting for this, but the bomb has not been planted. There's no need. Bolts the head of CT, though. Oh, no, that is so unfortunate. Big God made the right play the entire time. And then when it comes to the final few seconds, just gives away his head. Not expecting Waterfalls to be able to spot it. And now Waterfalls will finish off the job. Three kills. One to start off the run, and two to finish it. 4-1 here on the board. Extreme. They needed that one, and they got it. It's going to be fixed, going aggressive through the apartments. He wants this kill and he'll get it as well. A little bit of proactiveness, a little bit of aggression thrown in on the CT side here. And they've got B control. This is such an important run as well. This is a perfect time to throw that aggression in. Because, you know, you're in run number six. You're at a point where it's a swing round. You know, one of these teams will c control the economy. Instead of just letting it sit back and play passively, what they do is they just toss everything at them. You know, they go aggressive through the apartments. They get it done. My Moonshine is going to be sitting here looking for the kill. He will pick it up on a Vitosh. Two-man advantage, but not bad. This is going to send the T-side back to a very weak bite. Unless Waterfalls can manage to pull it back for the side. He will get the shot, but it's not the kill. And so he'll have to throw the smoke up and at least concede that he won't get the kill. But now he's got map control inside of mid. At least that's something. It's a good trade-off. Flash going in towards short. It's big god. He spotted the barrel of the AWP as well, hasn't he? Surely he has. Pretty sure he had done, but he's gonna have to fall back and start on the B bomb site. Doesn't really matter. We're not the most ideal situation to overextend in mid, but if he got that information at least, you would know there's another one up coming coming up towards short. It's waterfalls. They know where the op was, and it doesn't really matter because waterfalls are still going. If uh, he had actually pulled that off, it will be Oh what a shot from that who came. The double kill coming in. Jungle onto stairs, the flick is good. The double kill's there, and that's quite beautiful actually. Gotta say, maybe not killing Waterfalls was about to come back and bite them, but not in the end. Waterfalls ends up falling by the wayside. The double op setup looking strong there. Into, uh, sorry, the single op setup coming in for that who came in the double kill, shall I say, on the op. And that is uh, gonna be a 5 to 1 scoreline. Not bad. Obviously, an excellent start here. The buy coming in from Extreme. It's got weaknesses, it's got holes. Oh, it's definitely got some.
stream, I'm going to start to come in towards A. It's going to be a Molotov. If you like towards default, they'll spam away in Firebox. They know it's a possibility there could be a player there. They haven't fully checked it. You have to be careful. Moonshine's playing in from there. It's going to be the AWP trying to get it down, but Moonshine's going to walk around the corner. Two kills, even from them realizing there could be a player there. He still walks out and gets two kills. Talker and escape left in a 2v4. Talker flashes him sway through. He wants to get this kill towards jungle, but going to be fixed out. He'll get the pick. Looking for connector as well. Could be the kill for Bitgod. There it is on the airscape, not only on Talker 1v2. Back towards the connector and 5nk will find it. 6 to 1. Three players out towards top middle. It's going to be multiple players there, and Archie hunting these players with the Mac 10. Bit of a half buy coming in here from Extreme, and they'll go for the Mac 10 to upgrade the pistols. 5nk is going to get that kill as Archie just walks through the smoke. It's the man advantage for the CT side, but Vitosh looks to trade that back, and he's done it successfully. Tech 9 rattles away and gets a kill on a fix. Now it's going to be a 3v3. Extreme. Not expected to get too much into this one. They've actually been a very close, very competitive, but Vitosh will be finished off. And that's on to Waterfalls and Airskip into a 2v3. The bomb will get planted on the B-bomb site. Waterfalls will peek out to the right. Taking shots from above as Airskip, he'll find himself inside of the bomb site. As Moonshine is able to pick up Waterfalls. Nice shot from Airskip. Looking for a second, he's got it as well. Great stuff on the Deagle, and he can actually pull this off. Looking for the third kill. This would be nuts if he's able to do this. He looks back for the last player. The Deagle's still in hand. 5nk comes towards in the time ticking. Airscape picks it up. Three kills on the Deagle. Two beautiful one digs. And he finishes it off on 5nk. It's two here on the board for Extremum. Off the back of a run. They should not have won. But it happens for them. Absolutely nuts there on that B-bomb site. Take the first. The quick second. Plays it perfectly. Toys with his prey finishes him off. And I extreme would definitely have a chance here to start their T-side affair because not bad. Their money has been sort of low because it's been close. They, they've kept it modest here on the T-side and this might just be their chance to finally send it to the full eco. Waterfalls, he's going to be peeking towards middle. Extreme would actually have the better buy in this one. Even after being 6-1 up, not bad. You know, when they when they come into the the crucial round, they, they don't have too much money. That just shows how competitive this game has been already. Even though Extreme haven't got the rounds to prove it, this is their chance to do so. Not bad, 6-2. They end up losing this one to Extreme, and that would be <laughs> terrible. 5nk is going to be up towards the window. Not overextending just yet. That'll be the Molotov that goes up towards short. Multiple players starting to come on through. Waterfalls is going to be here. Archie up towards the top of connector. And that's going to be a headshot. That who came is the first man to fall. They're going to have to try and reply to this, I'm afraid. Bit God, he's in a position where he can maybe do so. Extreme room look to try and bring the bomb back over towards A. And there's a big flank coming in from Fix. He's got a rifle that can maybe pull this off as well. Going to org in his hands. The players have rotated towards A. It's perfect for the CTs here. This is where they have all their men. It's going to be 5nk with the initial pickup. Coming in from behind, it's Moonshine with a pick on the, the head of Waterfalls as 5nk will finally step through. Talker and Vitosh with two frags, but it's a big flank coming in. You have to remember, look at the ramp. Fix coming through, but 5nk just needs to stay alive. And he's got a kill. He's done better than that. And he'll finish it off. It's not even needed. Four kills for 5nk. And not bad win off the back of a lower buy. They had not as many rifles as that of Extreme. They did not have much utility, and they still managed to pull it off. Extreme have to be kicking themselves. That was their chance to try and build up a few rounds here on the T side. They will get another crack at it. Their buy is actually not too bad here. But this will be their last for a while. Lost one is built up for them, obviously. 
you know, with this uh, new economy system actually helping them out a little bit. Extreme in the past would be sent back to pretty much zero money. The new economy system, they do get a little bit of extra cash in their banks. Well, be out skip, starting things off well for Extreme. Man advantage picked up to try and bring it back. Oh, another one from Airscape as well. This is a good start from the T side. They got those two kills in reply. Not bad, really relied on an individual performance in the last one. Can they have that again? Moonshot will find the advantage, but Fix, ah, oh, no. Fix will fall. That could have been the pullback if they had been able to pick that up. It would have been a 3v3. Moonshot tried his best, but only managed the one kill. 5 and K falls. And this one is over. Extreme will actually pick up three. Well, Waterfalls just running in towards A. It's the good old dry strat. You don't give them a warning that you're coming. You don't fire off a warning shot. You just run straight in. And that can have a lot of impact because it's kind of like a, a surprise attack. You know, they, they have the element of surprise. Just out of nowhere, you have a, a kill. Waterfalls does that successfully. Extreme and will get the bomb planted on towards default. Well, it's actually inverted default, I think. <laughs> you know, it's on the other side above the box, but still relatively similar, and it will be planted for ramp. And the D goal, the D goal force buy is going to be saved here. The CT side is going to be back on the B bomb site, one of the T spawn. You know, they've had their success in these rounds, they shouldn't win, but. Not this time, it seems. We won't be able to get it done. And so it will be an 8th round on the board. Or should I say a 4th round on the board for Extreme. All 5 players stand alive. That's important. They're not really in a position to hunt either. Well, they will get some money built up now. Thanks to the loss bonus in the last. And obviously now they win the round with all 5 players stand alive. Easy job done. So man advantage for the T side. And it's gonna be 5 and K looking towards ramp has the deagle and wants to take a couple of shots. It's gonna be airscape taking the brunt of the damage. Waterfalls. It's gonna be dropped to 74 HP. Porker sits up towards the apartments and waiting for anything to come over the top. He's trying to wait for an extensive peak, but it's not gonna happen. 5 and K is just gonna sit alive on the bench. The CT is still with the Deagles in their hands. They want to get it done again here as they start to move through. It'll be Bit God on the pickup. Early advantage is the CTs, but can they hold on to it? At this point, when Extreme see the presence on the B bomb site, they're probably going to try and back off and go towards A. They have that option. They have mid control. And I think at this point, Not Bad will eventually realize that B is not going to be the final call. And so they're going to have to rotate on over it. Currently, one player sitting here on the bomb site has been there. Is that who came? And there's going to be another one as well. Moonshine has arrived to the party, but he's only got USP. Rotation coming in from the CT side. They're all over towards the A bomb site. Not Airskip. He wants to walk in through here. If only gets one, surely. But no, not even a single kill. All right, that's best case. Now we're there for the CT side. Now they have a two-man advantage and doing damage to the smoke on the Vitosh. He will start to spray. Lines up two. That's good. Back into the 3v3 now. Lines up another one. That's three kills for Vitosh. He might have done enough just to save his team. As Moonshot now into the 1v2. No kit alive. He has got an AK though. And Archie is going to be peeking from ramp, but the head angle is not fine. It's the kill from Waterfall. Is actually to pick that one up. And it'll be five on the board for Extremum. That was looking scary, but Vistosh, he does pull it back for his team against those pistols. If he had gone down, probably would have been a wrong win there for not uh, for not bad. It would have been a little bit easier to get back into the bomb site. Hit 
progression through mid. It's gonna be waterfalls with the early pickup. Imagine Cam able to get one onto waterfalls. Air escape and Archie. Able to find two kills between them and not into a 2v4. Two man advantage on the T side. 5nk. And Bitgod, they have to try and pull this right back. The early aggression not really working too well here for the CT side as Archie is able to find Bitgod again. It's all under 5nk. This is much better from Extremum. They're keeping this half close. The first half on Nuke was an absolute whitewash, but this is. is anything but. The bomb will be brought back over towards B. And they'll get planted very easily indeed. And 5nk will sit over towards the A bomb site. Saving that AUG. It will be 6 here on the board for Extremum. And this looks like it could be a very scary half for Extremum. But they've managed to really make a meal of it. The T side is the stronger affair. We've seen that yesterday on Vertigo. Try to see out on Nuke a little bit. And obviously here on Mirage, they're performing very well indeed on that CT on that T side. So if they can keep this up, they'll be feeling very happy indeed, I'm sure. This will be a run that they will be very happy about picking up very well indeed as well. Because not bad, they went into it with a full investment. You know, they ran towards Middle League trying to throw a little bit of... Aggression into the mix because they needed to turn it around, but it didn't really work for them. Extremum won the initial battles. It'll be a 7-6 scoreline. Only one round separating the two teams. You'd expect Extremum actually to go 7-7 at this point. Mainly because, you know, their weapon's way better. So, it's probably be an even scoreline at this point. Extremum will probably end up 7-7. Money's still not going to be too amazing for an old pad in the next one. But the loss one is going to be a big factor for that. And it's going to be a fast play. In towards B, Fix looks to line them up. Two kills, and the Deagle looking for a third, but Waterfalls able to get that one. Is at least put a stop to Fix, but Big God might be another problem that they haven't really predicted as the bomb will hit through the window. That is incredible. So unlucky, and the CTs punch from behind. It's all on Waterfalls. Have to pull this run off. The CTs walk away with the round win off the back of Pistols. Perfectly played there from Fix. Two kills early, and that has just stopped them in their tracks in the B bomb site. It's six. Not bad. Win the half. Can they get nine? That is absolutely incredible. No way they should have won that round, but they pull it off. That's going to be so tilting for Extreme Room. They walk in a B. You know, with not a whole lot of information. They could be a stack there as well. They walk in. Doesn't really matter. Fix puts a bullet in two of them. And uh, not expecting Bit God to be there either. Good stuff here from Not Pad. They managed to pull it off. Now they stand here on the last round of the half. Ahead. By two. Could be a margin of three. They managed to clean this one up. They'll be very happy about that one. Although they did manage to pull off around they shouldn't with one earlier. They weren't able to convert it and put two together. So extreme have shown that they have the mental resilience to come back straight away after round losses like that and, and put one on the board. And Talker is starting things off well. I think this is exactly how it went the last time as well. Talker opening things up inside the middle. Will be another kill towards underpass from Talker. And there we go. The double inside of mid. Extreme look at it trying to pull off this seventh round of the board. And no answer from not bad. Their mid control has been a bit been a bit hit or miss. I mean, they haven't really done too much inside of mid. And I think Extreme realized that is a weak point. Finally, Talker is put to bed and 5k, this is such a horrible angle. Why is he fighting that? You know, he had a he had a chance there. He got the one kill, perhaps, but decides to stand in the open. It's all falling apart as Vitosh and Archie get the kills. And who came less man alive over towards the A bomb site. It will be an 8 7 half here. As close as you can get it, ladies and gentlemen. There it is. Headshot from Vitosh. Half will reach its conclusion. 
And it will be 8-7. In the lead by one here are the CT side. But you have to remember, you know, it isn't as dominant as their nuke performance. They have won these rounds based off of, you know, they're in the lead because they won two rounds they probably shouldn't have won. You know, realistically, Extreme could have been in the lead by two. But, um... Or by three, it should have been, actually. But uh, they ended up letting it happen here. And not bad are in the lead by one rod. This pistol is incredibly important for both teams. It's as close as you can get it. We'll start them off well in the second half. It will be that who came looking for the early fights this out a bit, but Waterfalls needs to go huge. They're about to run past him. He's going to get the first one of course he will, but the trade is there, but air skips again there with the trade, and they've held back. This is good for the CTs and well played. The 2v4. Extreme will have the two-man advantage into this one. At this point, what's the answer from Fix? Can he get the kill towards short? No, they know exactly where he is now, though. That's a big problem. He will eventually take the kill. One minute left in the clock. Man advantage for the CT side still stands. The bomb is outside of B. Talker, he's been so good so far. Can he get another headshot? Of course he can. Last man alive is Fix on short. They know exactly where he was coming from, and Talker finishes him off. A clean tap. It's it to it. This time, it looks like Extreme MR waking up. Not bad, I've been a little bit more strugglesome here on Mirage, and that's a little bit strange to see, you know, as a team that have picked this map. Well, running straight towards ramp is Moonshine. He wanted to take that fight. He still stays alive though. He doesn't fall. And again, this shouldn't be a run that uh, not bad to expect to win. This should be one that's swept under the rug for Extreme. One of falls will find the opening kill. <laughs> well, that one was for sure, but eventually it will take it. Was well just a bit prolonged just to troll me. He does find the kill in the end. At this point, it looks like not bad. Do want to head it away in towards the B bomb site. They'll try to charge on in. The bomb plant is what they want, but it's not going to happen. They have been ripped apart here inside of the B site by Extreme, and it's 9 to 8 on the board. Utility's going to be picked up across the board for the CT side. Over on Not Bad, it's going to be the AK 47s being equipped. Utility is there as well. This is the uh, the first hurdle. Make sure you have had to jump over. Will they get the world record or will Not Bad be able to make them fall flat on their face? Now, if one player up towards Top Mid, it's going to be that who came. He wants to take that fight inside of middle, but can't really afford to do so. And some of the stack four players over towards B here for uh, for A, so I say from extreme. I'm expecting perhaps an A execute with a limited utility you usually have into these kinds of runs. But not bad have just went into a default. Extreme haven't really been forced to do anything different though. They can they haven't really got enough information to make them decide they want to leave A, so. At this point, it's just up to not bad to make their play. They take the map control they want, and then Extreme will react off the back of whatever happens on the server. Moonshine is about to make his way through ramp. This could work, though. Three players on the A bomb site. Moonshine going to have to Molotov over towards the top of jungle. That will be the play through connector. Now, this is where Extreme nearly have to get a couple of kills here. They don't get one to a sandwich. They nearly have to get this one. Otherwise, it's over. There goes Moonshine. Sandwich will fall. And that is the A bomb site is taken. Now they have to play a retake. Vitosh is up in power, so at least that's something that counteracts the, the failure in Sandwich, because they're not going to expect him to be up there, but he will not get his opportunity. He will not take the kill. And Big God will take away Archers while Waterfall's the only player getting anything done, but he's finished as well. Talk your last man alive. 1v4 coming back in from the B bomb site. 
Good job here from Not Bad. They surround the A bomb site through connector and ramp. They get rid of all the, the threats, they neutralize them. I'm more interested to see how much money Extreme have got into this next one. Because this is not exactly good territory for them. Not bad when the first gun run and they win it cleanly. And they lose one player. It's great for the economy of the T side. The CT is not a whole lot of cash to work with here, ladies and gentlemen. Do they go for the force buy knowing their opponent's economy is at its probably weakest state at this point? If we decide the eco, that will let it grow. So we'll go for the buy. We'll see what we can get done. And we've seen again, and uh, time and time again, especially on Mirage, we've seen yesterday, how impactful just having the open waterfalls is. If you can get that into his hands and just use that, this has so much impact across the board. So they've got a decent buy coming into this one. The main thing you have to look at is the open hands of waterfalls. That's got to have a lot of impact. And when you're asking for impact, usually he delivers. So Vitosh just got through Palace again. He's walked up through Palace. He's going to get so much information from this. And also get in behind. Like they're not going to expect him to push Palace again. Truly. Actually in T-spawn. Moonshine's just sitting up here on top of the boost. He's been spotted. Oh my god, Vitosh has just got a kill. That is the bomb. He'll get so much. As a player, actually, it looked like it was the bomb. The bomb's all the way back over towards the the ice, actually. Looked like X-ray. The bomb has been carried over, but he must have just been pulling out a, uh, a nade or something. The bomb up towards Behas. That's been collected and it's brought back towards the A bomb site. 5 and K is going to be towards the top of the connector. Starts to make its way through as it will be a kill on towards Archie. Monk is going to go off towards Top Cock. It will be a kill from Talker taking away Fix. And now it's into the man advantage for the CT side. Bomb carried over, planted in front of the triple stack. Talker's going to be flashed his way through in towards jungle, but it's a bit of a mistake, I have to say. Throws away the advantage, not really needed. They could have played it on a much more. Level dot retake, but there it is. Waterfalls will grab the advantage. Five and K's move made his way through connector. I think Waterfalls has actually has an inkling that he's here. And they will find a kill. That's great stuff for Waterfalls. Now they actually stand a chance. They actually have the advantage into this one. Moonshine has to try and pull it back. He will look towards Sandwich. There's the kill. Low HP on the player below, but they pulled it off. That is all off the back of Waterfalls. When you ask him for impact, like I said, he delivers. And he gets those two kills. A little bit strange from... Uh, a little bit of a strange setup there for not bad after they get the bomb planted. Not exactly in the most orthodox positions. And Waterfalls, I can't believe you actually seen the player moving through connector. That is absolutely nuts. Because of that, it pretty much wins them around, right? Well, Archie is going to find Bitgod. Spam going in as well as Moonshine will finally get the trade. It's in the 4v4. It was almost instant that trade as well. So at least they get that done. And it's going to be Waterfalls looking back towards the connector. Fix has been finished off. It will be man advantage for the CT side. Extreme. This is much better on Mirage, I have to say. I'm sure they're starting to feel rather confident about this. It will be... Into the 3v3 yet again, though, as the trade has always been there. Vitosh just holding in towards the A-bomb site. Starting to come on in towards his crosshair. That'll be the ball in the first face is there. The second as well as he's trying to move his way around. Moonshine, he's trying to get it done here. And there's the kill through the box. The bomb can be collected. And it's been brought back over towards the site. 5 and K able to find that. And now it's Talker. 1v2. As 5 and K starts to try and slither his way through the smoke. It's going to be... Oh, so awkward. Has he not spotted the player on stairs? Talker's just got through on stairs. They have no idea. 5 and K backs his way off. And finally, you will spot him. But that was so, so scary there for a second. Talker just walks in behind him. And walks back into the bomb site. 
pen of peace here. This game keeps delivering. Okay, so my mic wasn't working. What the hell? That's a little bit awkward. I've just been talking for the last, uh... 
last while. I can't remember when that got muted, but uh, <laughs> it was muted. But uh, we are here. Sounds a little bit unfortunate. That's always the problem when you have a bind to mute your mic and you're coughing and you, you hit that and forget to unmute or it doesn't actually activate or something. That was a little bit unfortunate, but I was discussing sort of how Waterfalls is a player that perhaps deserves a better team or whatever. Because he actually, back in the E-League Major, just definitely impressed me and impressed a lot of people, but hasn't really been given that opportunity since then to uh, to actually get his, his place on the, the better teams. But it is going to be Archie making his way through. He will take the kill under that. Who can fit Tosh and Waterfalls? They will get a couple of Flurry of Frogs, and Moonshine will be finished off as well. A really solid run, a clean one here from Extremum. It's through on the back of Vitosh, and it will be not bad on 12. Extreme on 11. That's the comeback trail. You know, they're only one run away here. Money's not amazing here, not bad. They're going to have to go for a, an eco. Only the CZs and Deagles picked up. And we'll be fixed. Looking back on towards mid. Waterfalls, he will pick up a kill. Archie able to find that one as well. That'll be 5nk and that who came into 3 versus 5. Is it's Waterfalls picking up a frog in towards underpass. Archie able to spring over the top and actually get that one as well. Extremum looking very good, not... 5nk, the last man standing, and this is going to be a 12-12. This is going to be a scoreline evened. 5nk will take the kill to Waterfalls, though. That will be him dropping. Oh, it's the floor. Looking for a second, but Talker, he will finish that one off from long range. And that will be 12-12. Only four runs separating the, both of these teams from victory here. Four runs would get extreme onto that third map. Four for not bad. We take his 2-0 victory for them. And they would love to get that under their belt. Waterfalls up on ticket. He'll be looking down the barrel in towards connector. Not bad. They're going to be bringing their troops back over through T spawn. Three of them currently sitting here. Yeah, I've got one all the way through on ramp. That's Vitosh on the CT side. He's actually going back over towards Palace. In fact, he's done this so many times where he's just went through Palace and got so much information off of it. Waterfalls is just sitting on ticket. I, I like this position when I'm mopping because you can obviously look over at connector. But the, the scary thing is you're always paranoid that they can walk out of Palace or ramp at any time. So that's always the scary part playing up there, but eventually have to fall back is this point. Vitosh is up inside a palace, looking back in towards ramp. Not bad. We're going to bring the bomb back for middle. It looks like they want to go for that A execute they've done quite often where they split through connector and ramp. But it's going to be a fake this time. I've actually sent the bomb back towards B. And this is where Talker is going to have to stand tall. He's thrown the smoke deep inside of B. And he has pushed through with the information play here. They've actually got the right read. It's not exactly... A very convincing fake, I have to say, here from the T side. And so Talker will be able to stand here, get one, make it two, make it three. As Talker lines all of them up inside of the apartments. It's all in the 5nk and Moonshine. And they were the two players left to try and sort of sell the fake towards A. I have to say, they uh, wouldn't make me buy anything. Five seconds. Is all they need to stay alive, though. The Chiefs are need to save over an extreme. We're going to hit 13. Oh, they are only three rounds away from taking us to that third map. Not bad. They need to get into this somehow. They've fallen flat here. They're not looking too solid at all. I should go out towards mid. That's going to allow the troops to move on through here from the T side. You know, in the first half, they got away with a couple of rounds. They probably shouldn't have won. But here again, they have a chance to uh, perhaps make that happen again. They're going to have to rely on it a little bit more. And it's not something you can rely on. 
one of the happens every now and then kind of thing. It's not exactly a reliable strategy or a winning formula, I have to say. They have not looked like a very solid unit in a while. It'll be a kill from Archie as he finds 5 and K. A kill from Moonshine arrives in as well. It's going to be a 4v4. A trade is at least there and they're keeping it even. The problem is they've lost one of the AKs. Can it be recovered? That's the question. Now I'm going to start to make their way in towards a flash buying or blind fix, and that's going to stop him from pushing on in. And waterfalls up on top. A ticket successful. Falls back in behind the box as well. And stays alive, goes back in for some more. He's able to pick that up, and now Moonshine, the last man alive. Waterfalls doing it all. It's a triple kill on the A-hold, and that will be an easy one for him as well. 14 to 12, two away here from Extremum, taking Mirage, their opponent's map pick, which uh, they'll be they'll be trading map picks, which is kind of strange to see. And I think with the sort of level that has been brought here by Extremum on Mirage, they're starting to look a little bit more like a solid team, a better team, I would say, than not bad, so... Perhaps when we get to that third map, that's when Not Bad actually drop off completely. Well, the Deagle starting to come up towards Archie. It's going to be Waterfalls taking away the kill. Thank God, able to get the kill on the Deagle. But is that enough just yet? Probably not at this point. Vitosh moves through the Palace and towards T-spawn. That'll be a kill from Talker. And we'll take away Bitgod and on the man advantage has been dwindled yet again as Moonshine finds Vitosh getting so aggressive. He's done it so many times. Is there something in, in him that just makes him want to walk through Palace every round? He's done it every single time. Just keeps walking through Palace. This time he's punished for it. Perhaps that's the end of it. Perhaps he'll stop doing that. No, probably not. Five seconds. Moonshine. He has got an orc towards push spots. One over towards CT. Spams on in. Tries to get the kill, but now he needs to be careful because Archie knows exactly where he is. In towards Underwood. And if they're so careful, oh, they're not going to check under. That's the bomb. At least they know where Archie is now. They know there's one Underwood. So 5 and K is trying to do his best, but the flashbang's there. He's dropped into 1 HP. Archie is still alive on 1 HP, and they cannot get that second shot. Eventually, 5 and K will land it. And now it's all going to be on to the 2v2. Bomb planted here. The chance here for not bad to steal this one away. Moonshine needs to get a kill, and there it is towards CT. Last man alive's talker. They look back towards Ramp. They know exactly where he is. Surely they are able to pull this one off. As Moonshine just hides behind triple. As long as no mistakes are made on the T side, this should be a run for them. They just hide behind the boxes. Talker comes on in. He tries to pull off the clutch, but 5 and K, they still have no idea where he is. Talker has no idea that he's default, and he'll take the headshot. It's a 14-13 scoreline, and not bad are still in this game. players towards top mid for the T side. Not bad. They need this one again. They cannot afford to fall to map point. I want to bring it to 14-14. Extreme and end up losing this one. It could be crucial. It could be critical. They could be down to 14-14. Money's not amazing. Probably find themselves facing map point if they're not careful here. It's going to be fixed straight to wait. Going out towards the A bomb site. Molotov will go towards CT. That's going to put them at bay. And in, in as well. Not bad. Definitely telegraphing that they're here on A. And still no rotation from the B bomb site. They, they think this is too obvious. They think they're just going to be trying to fake them or bamboozle them. And it's not the case. They are just about to walk in towards the A site. And they've got it just off sheer force. Problem is they haven't smoked CT very well. And Waterfalls is just looking there. Aren't she'll find the amount advantage. And this is weird. This is not a great run for the T site, I have to say. Bomb does get planted though. Lack of utility really coming in against them. Luckily with what they've got, they force them away and they do get the bomb planted. ZTs have the advantage though, coming into the retake and Waterfalls is still alive and that's such a scary player to still be here. Looks back towards ramp, what is 5 and K doing? 
Why has he done that? That's so confusing. Fix will have to step up. And indeed he will. Two kills come in. Make it three overall and they're on for him. And there's the quad kill. Fix pulls it off. And he had to go huge and he did. He went nuclear. It's 14-14. Two runs away. Or not bad, not as well. And the problem for Extreme is their money is in the bin. This is going to be a couple of pistols, maybe at max here. It's all like not bad to map point. Pause has to come through Extreme and realize we've come so far. We cannot lose 16-14. This is going to be heartbreaking. What are they going to do to bring it to either overtime or what are you going to do to get 15 here? Because this is so important. Waterfalls has had a massive game yet again. 27 kills on him. He's definitely the star player of this team on Extreme. Airscape has been, you know, up there with him, but he's super quiet this game by his by his standards. 12 kills, 18 death. The quietest player on the team. Over on the not bad side of things, it's been a, a large team performance from 5NK, Moonshine and Fix. With uh, Bitgold doing some... Having his moments, I would say. That who came actually recovered one of the important runs where they were up against a low buy. Actually, just the USP, zero investment, you know, when it looked like... Uh, Vitorst was about to get a triple kill on the USP, but that who came came in and sweeped them up. I'll take a look at those odds brought to you by GG.bet. Make sure if you're wanting to bet on some Counter Strike matches, you head over there and bet responsibly. Take a look at the favorites. It currently seems like. Streaming by the favorites, at least by the odds of GG Bet. Hello, 14 14. Let's see if they can pull it off with just P250s, 5.7s, and Deagles. We've seen it done so far on this map. The AKs and the Orgs, they should be favored to win this one. But I always get scared when it's the low buys. You play a little bit more freely, you know, less controlled, a little bit more chaotic. Well,. He's discovered a boot of some sort, or a bag. All these games have been pretty close in, in the CIS region. I mean, there's never been really a massive overdog. And obviously, you've got your better teams in there. Vegas Squadron, Windstrike, probably Spirit. But, you know, around this level, you know, there's always going to be close games. It's going to be fun to watch. It's definitely delivered here on this map, for sure. 14-14. Just the pistols here for Extremum. Not bad. Starting to make their way over towards middle with three players. Two up towards B. Looks like a B split is about to be the call. And there's only one player currently here. This should be death for Airscape, who has been quiet. He has got a deagle and he's hiding inside of the site. The rotation from the CT is coming in from short. At this point, not bad. Need to get that kill quickly and get the bomb planted. Airscape trying to do his best, but he's been dropped through the wall. Bomb getting planted for short. That's not where you want to plant. I'll give you a little hit there. 5k big dog, they will get themselves two kills. And Talker, last man alive. 1v4. That will not happen. It will be map point here for not bad. Surely Talker doesn't get more than a kill here. I have to say, this has been a lot better for not bad. You know, they seem to have some sort of idea on what they want to do. Their mid take was pretty strong there. Um, again, of course, against the pistols, very simple stuff. And I'll be finished off 15-14, but this is where things get right to the edge. Double up setup immediately coming through here from Extremum. You pull this out when things are looking rough. You pull this out when you're losing and nothing else is working. And that's what Extremum have done here. They've got the double up setup, one on Archie, one on Waterfalls. We know how impactful it can be on Waterfalls, but perhaps having a second one will free him up a little bit more. He can play a little bit more leniently, a bit more aggressive, find more impact across the map. Or perhaps they sent Archie in to do that. Of course you want to see uh, Waterfalls doing it, because he would be the the player that probably has the most impact across the board and probably more stable. But here we go, a streamer. Their possible final buy here is the last one of regulation. It's either this or a win for not bad 2-0 in the series, or it's over time and Extreme will try and fight on to try and bring us to that third dust suit. There will be utility being thrown towards top middle. Multiple players sitting there with their rifles towards top mid. And the way WP to challenge here, 
And that's something extreme would have in spades. Two of them. And there's one from Waterfalls. A pick coming in onto that who came. This could be the start that they need. But Waterfalls will fall instantly in reply to 5 and K. That was so important that he got that trade. And he gets it as well. It's 4v4. Forcing himself into the fight towards the connector just to pick up the trade kill. And he stays alive as well. He might just get another one here. Air skips up towards the window. Molotov's gonna go in towards window. Trying to beat the play here. 5 and K is in a bit of a weird angle. Airskip probably won't be expecting that, but they know he's up in ladder room. They know there's a player up there, and now he's kind of locked in inside of ladder room. He cannot get out of there. And so this is where the man advantage might just come through for the T side as they realize they have that player locked in ladder room. That means there's only one player surely on B. And the push coming in here. It's Airskip with one on the moonshine. Can he get another? But no, 5 and K through the smoke. It's going to be a 3v3. And Fix is able to pick up Talker. Vitosh and Archie into a 2 versus 3 knot. As Vix will look towards the, the left, he will spot a low HP player inside of Kitchen, but does he know how low he actually is? They cross on over, Fix looks for the pick, stays alive towards the back of the bomb site, as Archie looking for the wall by. He will hit it, down to 10 HP, this is so close indeed, the CT is desperately looking for a way back into this. And Vitosh is on the bomb site. He looks for the headshot. Archie picks it up. All on 5 NK, into the 1 versus 2, has to line them up. He's playing from short. He's tapped the bomb. Where is he? Does he have K? Is he timed out? No way. What? What just happened? Is that FK? He timed out. Are you kidding me? I don't think they can replay that round either. Oh, I thought he was playing from short. I seen him from short, surely. I was wondering what the hell was happening. I looked at the minimap, said it was short before it, and suddenly I look back and he's top mid. FK. Well, <laughs> overtime it is, ladies and gentlemen. I'm looking forward to seeing the chat's reaction to this, because it's kind of nuts. I wonder what the players are saying currently. I'm going to stand by screen to see what I can see here. But not the console, now look at chat. They haven't really said anything. Way of interest. I have to say, that retake was so great from the CT side. That was so, so easy. Uh, that was so well played, should I say, from them. You know, it was looking so down to that, even though they had a player that was timing out on the other side. It was still looking good for them. They come back into the retake. It's into the 2v1 in the end. And, you know, if he had been playing for a short, he would have had to line them up. But obviously being timed out doesn't exactly help too much. ha. <laughs> I've just seen the chat's reaction to what just happened. I have no idea what's going on right now. I think they have to wait on his, uh, on his internet to, to get back. While we're waiting, we're going to go to a short break. We'll be right back after this one. We'll see what the, uh, the verdict is. I think we're going to have to play overtime.
Well, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. After that uh, crazy run, we're right back into it. And there's uh, there's like there's no volume in game because I muted that. Uh, but it is going to be a very fun one here because <laughs> that was a very weird and strange run. We just seen a uh, very strange final run to regulation, but we're into overtime. Player did disconnect and uh, seems to be back. It's Vitosh taking the first kill for the CT side here. Extreme, if they manage to pull this off, they'll be very happy because they'll be back into the series. They'll be back on that third map, but nope. There's going to be a couple of kills for the T side here. It's all on Torku. Into a 1v3. That's got that AWP all the way over towards the B-bomb site. I'll have to try and find his way back over it. They'll be transferring the bomb safely. Over towards... The A ramp. Moonshine is going to be sitting inside the middle. Just knows who the last player is. It'll be 16 15 for not bad. And they managed to pull it off. It'll be the first round of overtime going their way. I'd say, to be honest, if not bad ends up losing this one, they're going to be very, very pissed off. I think that's very safe to say. Who knows if they would have been able to win that 1v2. But uh, it happened. I think you just have to uh, keep positive, move forward, and look on to the right later on because. Anyway, it's mostly important at this point. I'm gonna have to try and... Get themselves around under their belt. I mean, the smoke going over the top. Archie able to get fixed. It will be Vitosh there with a kill on the 5nk as well. And our waterfalls looks back on up. Towards Palace. Grenier goes through. Bit god able to find Vitosh, and I'll be into a man advantage for the CT side. This could be it. First again, you have to remember, in overtime, it's first to get to 19 rounds, win 4 over their opponents. If it uh, is even and goes 18 18, we go to overtime number 2. And we know Extreme are no strangers to overtime. Number two. We've seen that yesterday on uh, on Vertigo. They managed to win it. Will be the boys are not bad. Starting to make their way in towards the A bomb site. Waterfalls up on top of ticket, trying to take a peek, but cannot really get it done towards ramp. I'm just sitting here, Archer will be able to fight that who came and Archer into a 2v3 as Bitcoin finally strikes into action in towards the A bomb site and he will get a kill as Moonshine able to find out skip. It's in the 2v2 with 20 seconds left, the bomb will get carried over and get planted just in front of the triple stack to fake and he pulled off, gets the kill to waterfalls, bits him wide into the open and our talker is left into a 1v2, well played from Bitcoin. That is absolutely stellar stuff. Taps. Holds it for a few seconds, comes off the bomb plant, gets the kill towards Waterfalls. Runs back towards default, and I should be into a 1v2 that this is looking winnable. DT runs back in towards this connector, that's going to be the kill from Moonshine. And what a recovery there from Not Bad. That was looking so good for Extremum, but they come right back into it, and Not Bad pull it off. 17-15. It would be one hell of a statement if Not Bad managed to just flawlessly win over time 19-15 they're off to a very solid start here on the first half of overtime number one looking ready and poised to take this flawless T half and let's drop in a single round here in overtime we need to go in towards deep lower and we'll, uh, do a little bit of damage but let's keep sneaking up it's going to be one kill for 5nk but traded back immediately by the MP9 and we'll be into a 4v4. No advantage picked up just yet, but that could have been it. Waterfalls of the Sea's head fighting from Connector. He'll be forced to wait. And obviously with this being 10k over time, you obviously run out of cash, so... But we'll buy economy management. That's why so many people want to see... 16k over time, because they don't... A lot of people have the idea that... You know, for an overtime, it should just be buy after buy. It should be everyone on the buy every single round. And it should just be the, the best rounds possible playing on, but some people like the element of the economy coming into play again. And there goes Vitosh taking away Moonshine. They'll be into the man advantage for the CT side. They've managed to pull this one 
back off the back of, you know, the weaker buy here. And they're still in touching distance, but Fix will get the kill on the outskip as they move in towards the B bomb site. They've made the right call to go here because it has to be the retake from the CTs. They've got two pistols to work with and an AUG, so things on paper definitely looking good here for not bad. And Extreme are going to have to show us what they're made of as they come in towards the bomb site. BitGod's going to hold off. There's the headshot on the bit touch. A second for BitGod. He looks to have done enough by himself. And there it is. The 3K comes in. It's 18-15. A flawless T side half coming in here on overtime number one from Not Bad. As you move into the second half, they have three chances to take this one over the line. One round left here for not bad to pick up. You have three chances at it. If they end up losing two, they still have another chance. AWP in the hands of that who came. Do we try to be the man who takes it over the line for the team? Yeah, it's been rather quiet, but having that AWP in his hands might open up a couple of opportunities for him in this one. Will be extremely sending most of their players over towards middle. They have three towards top, one in towards the ramp area, one up towards the B apartments. At this point, extreme would love to get themselves into play. CT's playing very passively, not really throwing too much aggression at them just yet, letting extreme play their game. Let's we'll see if that comes back to bite, not bad. Because Extreme will look to try and take a little bit of control. They have three players up towards top mid, slowly but surely taking this. The fourth is arriving with the bomb. And uh, they start to make their way up. They might decide to go for him for a B hit here because they have one player up towards the B apartments that can be an extra prong to their approach. And this is where it goes. They've got uh, two players standing on the B bomb site. One that's relatively close to rotate, but there's fixed with the early pickup. Archie's going to fall. No trade just yet. The, the rotation coming in from the CTs as well. Airscape will hit the deck. Big God gets it. That should be it. It's Talker on his own in a 1v5. And they couldn't get it done in regulation due to some technical problems. Who knows if they would have won that 1v2. But what that we do know is they won over time flawlessly. 19-15. to 15. It will be a 2-0 here in the series from Not Bad. It was a little prolonged, but they get it done on two maps. Nuke was very, very well played. The second... A long haul battle, but they get it done on Mirage, and they will 2-0 moving forward in the CIS minor close qualifier. Join us after the break, though, because we've got another best of three coming right up. It's going to be a good one. Charge up your game with excitement. Highest odds on the market. Coverage of all live and pre match events. Place your bets with Solid Bookmaker and win with your favorite teams. Take what's rightfully yours with GG.com.